Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we are gonna talk about drills and exercises to master the turn in our disc golf throw. More importantly, we're gonna talk about one specific area that is absolutely crucial for us to master in order to maximize our distance throwing potential, but also it's important for injury prevention. And that area is our thoracic spine or T-spine in this video. Let's just jump right into the instruction. Here's our thoracic spine and where it is located. And as a rotational athlete, which is what disc golfers are, this is what creates our turn in our disc golf throw. And we're looking for this hip shoulder separation that really is gonna transfer the force from our lower half of our body to the upper half of our body. So it's imperative we have the proper strength, flexibility, and technique to master this area. Here's another great look at our hip shoulder separation. This is also extremely important for sidearm throwers as well. So in order to maximize your potential as a thrower, we need to turn properly and have the proper movement and strength in the T-spine. So when we see these pros crushing discs on tour five, 600 feet, they are exhibiting perfect technique. They're also moving their bodies in what we call elite patterns. And a lot of us, based on our flexibility and movement, can't get into those elite patterns or elite positions. Our body is going to find a way to rotate whether we have the proper motion in our back or not. And what happens when we don't have that proper movement in our back, we get micro trauma, which ultimately causes injuries. For example, you might have knots in your back all over. I know that's my problem. I've got a bunch of stuff going into my neck and my shoulder blades from throwing batting practice for 24 years. I'm just starting this movement journey and since I've been doing it, my body feels so much better and I have gained distance. Another result of these micro traumas you might experience are injuries in your shoulder or arm. So it's really important we get the technique down to turn properly, so let's talk about that now. All right, when we initiate our turn for our reach back, we wanna do a couple of things. Number one, the timing of the turn is going to be sometime after our X step. A lot of times people, when they're running up, they're turning already. That's gonna rob you from power, just like an NFL quarterback. They do their step first and then they throw. We need to do the same thing, X step. And really we wanna to try to get this turn as late as possible, somewhere in the glide, our hip glide. We wanna initiate that turn. Everybody's going to be a little bit different based on how quickly or slowly they turn. Also, we don't want any weird lean. We wanna keep our spine uh, straight or vertical, whatever verbiage works for you. We don't want any leans. We don't want any leans this way. We don't wanna X step, bend this way. We don't wanna create our hyzer angle from our T-spine. That's gonna rob us of athleticism and that ability to turn and rob us of power. We want to create it from our hips. This is an athletic position. This is where we create our athletic lean from when we do our hyzer, just like this. Flat, pretty much here, depending on your flexibility, and anhyzer. But it comes from this area of our body here, not this area of our body. All right, let's start off with some drills. The first thing we're gonna do is measure our T-spine mobility. We're gonna sit on a bench with something in between our knees to keep our lower half steady. I have two red pieces of tape on the floor to measure 45 degrees, and I'm using my PVC pipe to turn both ways to see if I can get past that 45 degree mark and if one side is tighter than another or if I have pain on one side or another. I'm also going to turn and twist sideways couple of different segments here because that is another one of the functions of our T-spine. Again, measuring if one side is more flexible than another or if there's pain on one side or another. The second way you can do this is sit crisscross applesauce. That'll measure your 45 degrees with your thighs and go back and forth the way I'm doing holding the PVC pipe. What we're looking for is anywhere from 50 to 70 degrees and 70 to 90 is really an elite movement. Our next drill is a hip shoulder disassociation drill where I'm moving my shoulders back and forth while keeping my hips anchored and then switching and moving my hips back and forth while keeping my shoulders anchored. It's a great way to teach your body that disassociation and get that hip shoulder separation we need to really engage that rubber band throughout our core and maximize our distance. Our next drill is gonna be a turning drill. As I said before, we wanna initiate the turn from the back shoulder. 
We also want to keep our spine vertical as we rotate. This is what this drill is teaching us to do. We're keeping our PVC pipe brushing the ground. That would prevent you from any weird lean as you rotate. You can also let go with your top hand and get into your reach back. That will help you get in the actual disc golf position. Again, we're just looking for a smooth rotation, no leans, and making sure we get used to the movement, engaging the back shoulder first. Here I'm working the opposite way for my sidearm throw. The next drill is the leave the disc drill. This is where we leave the disc planted. This will help you with your timing of your reach back and your turn. You can see here, I've just got that PVC pipe locked down and I'm walking my body around the disc. It's a great drill for a lot of things, but also just working on getting that turn without any weird leans. Now we're gonna to switch to a shortened version of this drill. We're just gonna work on our foot glide and the timing when we're gonna turn. Everybody's gonna be slightly different whether they move a little faster or slower. Also, this drill really helps me work on keeping my weight on my back foot without leaning while I turn. Here's just a remedial drill, just if you have trouble feeling the core of your body moving, just taking the lower half out of the equation and just working on a turn, you can work on your reach back too. Just to really feel that rubber band in the core of your body. It's nothing special and you can work through your whole disc golf throw if you want to. And finally, once again, we're just working on turning our waist here, creating our lines here. I'm throwing flat. I'm just working on my turn with the PVC pipe giving ourselves a little guidance here, just so we don't have any weird leans, making sure we bend from our hips like I showed you before and hitting those lines. I've got a full video breakdown, one of my early ones on all three of those lines. I just want to show everybody again so you can still work on the turn this way. Now let's talk about some strength and mobility exercise. Do not skip these, these are extremely important. Our first mobility drill is a T-spine extension. And as you can see, this is where I started. I couldn't get my arms all the way down, I was really struggling been doing this for a few weeks and I've really been able to get it down there. The biggest thing is we want to turn our hips forward so our lower back is touching the ground on this. And then the movement is pretty simple itself. It's just a matter of your uh, restrictive movements, whether it's your joints or your muscles, and just going straight back and forth and feeling that stretch. And after you do this for a few days, you will really improve the movement in your T-spine and it will really help with your disc golf throw. Can also add a weight to this activity to, to turn it into a strengthening activity as well but once again the big key points are getting that movement from the upper part of your back from just below your shoulder blades not from your lower back this is a lightweight drill don't go jamming heavy weights here because the muscles in this area can be a little bit sensitive our next position is the preacher position i'm just showing you to curl your hips forward making sure that lower back is straight i'm going to get our elbows on a bench and then we're getting the movement once again from our upper back. You can see how tight my thoracic spine is. Definitely need a lot of improvement here. Once again, I've been doing this journey of mobility for a couple weeks now. And believe it or not, this has improved. I've got tons of knots all around my shoulder blades from throwing years and years of batting practice. You can also use a PVC pipe to help you notice my elbows are pointing in. This is going to put the tension in the correct spot of our back. We don't want it in our lats. We want it in the middle part of our back. Once again, we're just dropping our hips so we can sink down. Some people will be able to sink their hips so low that they get the upper part of their arms by their ear or behind their ear. Obviously, I'm not there yet, but I am improving. But this is a great activity to use with the PVC pipe and really opens up the middle part of your back. You can also use a foam roller to make this happen as well. I've got it just below my shoulder blades. My core is tight, and once again, my hips are rolled forward to keep that back flat and I'm just moving a little bit and just feeling that stretch. You can have your hands across your chest or you can reach your hands straight out like I'm doing and do a little pulse and try to go a little bit further and further each time. If you wanted to turn this into a ballistic strength training activity, you can hold a medicine ball and throw it up against the wall right in front of you. I'm not quite there yet. You can also hold your hands behind your head with your elbows out like this and also create the movement that way, whatever works best for you. The next exercise are called windmills. Same concept with keeping our back in line and that lower back touching the foam and we're just moving our arms up and down in a controlled motion. The next exercise are called book openers. I'm gonna use my foam roller to brace my knees and just open up my T-spine nice and easily. There's a lot of ways to do this and this is a phenomenal way to warm up for disc golf throwing. Key point here is to not let my hips move and getting all that motion up in the middle part of my back in the T-spine. Of course, we always want to do everything on both sides in order to make sure our flexibility and strength is balanced. 
If you don't have a foam roller, you can do this on your knees. Just make sure both legs are at a nice 90 degree angle and we're keeping our hips straight. Once again, forcing all this motion to happen in the upper part of our back where our T-spine is located. And this is most likely the exercise you would do for your disc golf warm up. Once again, great for warming up that T-spine to maximize your power. It's also great to do it both ways so you can see what kind of strength and flexibility you have on both sides of your body. This exercise is called wall windmills or wall half circles, whichever you prefer. Both legs are at 90 degrees and I'm just tracing the wall with my arm, not letting my hand touch the wall and kind of keeping the same exact distance the entire time. You can also use a foam roller or PVC pipe on the outside portion of your knee to make sure your hips stay straight. I'm not using it here because I'm pretty good at holding that position. But once again, this is just a great exercise to open up that T-spine and work your shoulders in the mix too, and just really feel that opening sensation. Here's our first T-spine strengthening activity. This is a scap push-up, great for just building that area in between your shoulder blades. If you've got knots in your back, this is a great cure. We also here have Ys to Ws, Ws to Ys, whatever you want to call them. Big key point here is just initiating the movement from your shoulder blades and not your arms. Here I'm going to show you a couple different versions of the Y lift, the great exercise to strengthen our T-spine. Notice I'm flat on the ground, I'm not lifting my head, just getting that motion in the upper part of my back. This is just with a PVC pipe here. If that's too much of a challenge, you can get on an inclined bench here and just go with your thumbs up, creating that Y with your body. You really feel it in your T-spine area. And finally doing the Y lift with some weights. This is a lightweight exercise. A lot of these muscles in your neck trap area are a little bit sensitive, so we don't want to jam too much of heavy weight too early. Next exercise is a little bit more advanced. It's a Y lift into a pull down. Once again, we want to create this movement with our shoulder blades and not use our head by lifting our head up or anything of that nature. We want to keep our body nice and relaxed and just use the T-spine area. Hangs are always a great option. We've got a full video breaking down everything about the hang. Aim for sets of about one minute. This will work a lot of areas in your T-spine and upper back that are great for you. Finally, we've got some overhead squats. That's just what it is. I'm holding the lightweight. You can also use a medicine ball. It's in our medicine ball drills video. Just getting down in that proper squat position and holding that ball or weight up in that proper position really works our T-spine in the middle part of our back. That's all I've got for today. Thank you so much for watching and the support of the channel. If you've hung in this long, please like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you think and what you'd like to see me break down next. Until next time, peace.